Hey everybody, Happy New Year. It's Jameson. And I realize I'm never in front of the camera. <laughs> I'm always behind the camera and I'm nothing to look at, but I thought I would just uh, start off by saying Happy New Year. Thank you for your support and watching all the videos and learning along with me and your wonderful comments and, and uh, you know, it just keeps me going. So this is my first video for the new year. I hope that you enjoy it. I learned something through the process and I want to encourage you first, watch to the very end because I did have a little bonus project that I put in at the very end of the video. It wasn't worth its own video, but I thought it was still worth sharing anyway. So watch through uh, for that. And then just say, you know, thanks for coming along for the ride. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing my videos. Um, I'm looking forward to a really cool 2021. I want to continue to learn. I've only been doing this fusing for about two, two and a half years. And I feel like every project, I'm trying something new, I'm learning. I feel like I'm about to go into this kind of big scrap melt, pot melt phase. I want to try some pot melts. I want to try maybe some smashed glass. I want to do more strip construction, lots of scrap melts. I'm going to have some fun playing and learning. And I'll film these so that you can learn along with me. And then, um, you know, who knows what else? We'll try some different materials. I want to do some other non-traditional fusing molds like I did earlier in the year um, or in, in 2020. So more to come. Hard to know exactly what it's going to be. I don't know if they're all going to be successful either, but I sure like to have fun making things. I like to have fun sharing them with you. Uh, so thank you. Enjoy this video. Watch to the end. Subscribe. And uh, we'll see what we learn together this year. Love your comments. Love your support. Love your questions. Uh, it's challenging me, so keep it up. Thanks, everybody. Hey, it's Jameson with Four Leaves Glass, and I thought I would shoot a quick video to show you that I'm working on another one of these Lari spray molds. This time I'm going to do a good old-fashioned scrap melt. Pay no attention to everything else that's in the kiln. Focus your attention here on this uh, round piece. So this is a 12-inch round um, stainless steel mold, one inch tall. Lari Spray makes these. And um, I also bought from her the one inch um, tall, eighth inch thick uh, fiber paper and made a ring around there. I put a little piece of papyrus behind there just in case I get a little glass leakage. And I've got this sitting on a piece of papyrus. So I did the calculations for volume and figured out that I need 39 ounces of glass in order to get a 12 inch circle that's six millimeters thick. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I'm getting my glass for this scrap melt. So I had a piece, um, actually two different pieces of um, peacock blue glass from Bullseye with a clear cap, clear tecta that I fused that didn't work. I got big bubbles in them and I was really frustrated. I kept the glass and I busted it up into a bunch of smaller pieces, and then I used my frit piston. I'll put a link to this, but I bought this frit piston, and I um, just hammered the hell out of it, to be honest, in the frit piston. And then I sorted it in um, these sorters. So I think that there are others that are available, but these are some frit sorters, and so there's this is a four-piece set. Uh, I'll post a link to this as well. You got a fine mesh screen on the bottom, then another mesh screen, a little bit larger, another one's a little bit larger, and finally the fourth one that's really large. And you put your crushed pieces from here into your frit sifter, and this will help you get coarse, medium, fine, and powder, ultimately. Uh, and then there's also, uh, because this is because this is uh, metal, you're going to get maybe little metal fragments. So there's a, a magnet to use uh, to get the the any metal fragments out of your out of your frit. And then, not to make you dizzy, but then you end up with something like this. So I had some really large chunks, which is great. This is what I'm going to use. You can see um, how that's uh, you know peacock, and then it's capped with clear. So I've got a layer of clear in there. I've got these large pieces that I'm going to use in the um, in the melt, but then I also got, um, let's see here, <laughs> some various sizes. I got some, you know, quite larger chunks of frit, kind of extra coarse, if you will, and then some coarse, this is all, these are two ounce cups, and uh, almost every one of them is, is full. So I've got um, some coarse there, some uh, medium at the bottom, finer, and then some powder. I don't know if this is gonna turn, if this powder would turn out to be any good, I think the others would be fine. I'm not sure. I've never used Peacock as a powder because Bullseye doesn't sell it. So we'll see how it fires. I'll, I'll try something. Maybe I'll shoot a video and do something like that later. But that's not why we're here. These are the larger frit pieces. What I've done is I've washed them up. 
and then I am measuring them. Follow me along back across my tiny little studio. Got a, a scale here and I'm measuring out the pieces of, of uh, this fractured up glass to get me to 39 ounces. And then I will pile that up in the mold. Stay tuned and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, now I didn't have enough of the um, peacock alone. So I had a bunch of offcuts of Tecta here. So I piled up some of uh, these offcuts to get myself up to 39. Actually, I went to 40 just for good measure, uh, 39 grams. So what are ounces rather. What I am gonna do uh, is chop this up a little bit uh, smaller and kind of mix it all in. So it's just all incorporated as, as part of the mixture. But I wanted to show you as a good tip here, not to get rid of your off cups. Always keep your scraps, particularly if you're gonna be doing scrap melts like this because that glass comes to good use. It was nice to, to be able to fill up my bucket. Okay, so I chopped up that glass and um, I put it all in a, in a big bucket and then frankly dumped it in a huge pile <laughs> right on top uh, in the middle here. That's not the way I'm gonna leave it though. I'm gonna push it out to the edge a little bit um, to help this glass spread out. Um, what you want though is not to get too much around the edge that you want it to climb up. You don't want spikes. Uh, you want to do as little cold work as possible. So, uh, and this is not my tip. I, I pulled this directly from uh, directions online, including uh, some tips from Laurie, um, that you want the glass to, to spread out to the fiber. Uh, but you don't want it up against the fiber to begin with because then it'll it'll get too many spikes. So I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit and then uh, we'll be ready to fire. Okay, I've spread this out now. Um, I've tried to be very careful around the edges. What I forgot to mention is that I did spray zip on this 1 8 fiber paper because I'd like for this to release cleanly so that I can use that fiber paper within that mold again. So um, I did spray zip in there and I've just been very careful not to get too much up on the edges. Uh, and not to knock any of that zip off into my work. Um, I was also just kind of looking around, trying to make sure that I had a, a fairly even depth across this whole thing. And that in most cases, all the areas had glass that was about two layers thick. You have to remember that these large chunks of peacock were already two layers thick to begin with. So um, in some cases there may just be one piece there, but that's okay because it's already kind of that two layer, six millimeter thickness. So um, now we are going to fire this. I'll post the firing schedule in the show or in the in the video description right underneath this um, video. Just click the little carrot and you can see the firing schedule. Let's see what it looks like when it comes out. Okay. Okay, so I opened this piece up and um, you know, there just wasn't enough glass. So it's got some uh, kind of scallopy edges, if you will, where there wasn't enough glass at the edge. So a couple of thoughts. I may need to adjust the weight that I had planned for this. I had calculated the weight to be 39 grams, uh, and I had even cut 40 just to be on the safer side, but uh, maybe I need to do a little bit more. Uh, it's probably a little thicker in the middle than on those edges, <clears throat> so that's just something to think about when you're doing your kneeling schedule. Uh, so I am going to... I originally thought, I don't actually mind that edge. I mean, it's kind of a natural, almost kind of scallopy look all the way around, except for this area. There's not a lot of it here. Um, doesn't have to be uniform, uh, but the, the melt itself turned out gorgeous. Um, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put some clear frit around the edges to try to get a nice clean edge on that. And rather than lift this out, I'm going to just very carefully wipe down the surface while it sits here on the on the paper and in the mold and not even do anything else to it. I'll wipe down the surface. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because um, there may have been some spalling that came from the mold, the, or the stainless steel former, and I don't want that steel then to get trapped in there. So I'll add a little frit around the edges, not frit really, but just chopped up large pieces of Tecta to kind of get me to um, a nice full complete round circle and just refire it where it sits. But I think it's gorgeous as it is right now. Okay, I just wanted to show this to you quickly. So I did, um, I used some alcohol on a little cotton pad and this is all the black that came off the top of it. That's the spalling off of the mold and, uh, or that stainless steel former. And if I hadn't cleaned this glass, I didn't want to pull it out and risk disrupting the paper underneath and the um, paper in within the form there. So I didn't want to pull it out to clean it. But if I hadn't cleaned it, all of this would be trapped in the glass then when I refire. Nobody wants that.
Okay, here it is. I just opened the kiln. Looks great. Those areas filled in quite a bit. Um, there are a few bubbles in this piece. I think that's to be expected. I did have a good bubble squeeze on here, but um, you know, still get a few little bits in here and there, but I'm okay with that because it's glass and that's what glass does. So I'm going to very carefully now remove the um, the uh, former, the stainless steel former, and I'm going to try to keep that paper intact uh, that's in the inside so that I can use that again. Okay, so I have uh, done just a little bit of cold working around the edge of this, and um, I've cleaned this up, and I'm a little perplexed. And, you know, as I've said in all my videos, I'm learning, and this is a learning journey, and I'm bringing you along to learn with me, and I don't have the answer to this. So if there are any specific ideas, I'd love to hear them. <clears throat> I've got a lot more bubbles that surfaced and then kind of sunk in on this firing versus the first firing. So remember, it was in the kiln, and I cleaned it up, and then added a little bit more glass and I added a clear dusting of powder. And now I've got a lot more bubbles. And so I'm, I'm pretty certain that it wasn't the powder that did that. And the only difference I did in my firing schedule, so take a listen to the firing schedule. The first time I went up to 1225 and I used a speed of 400 degrees. So 400 to 1225 and I held it for an hour. And then I went up to my full fuse temp of 1480 and I held that for 30 minutes. The second time in, because it had already been fired, I wanted to be a little more conservative on the ramp. So I only went 300 an hour to 1225. And that time for that bubble squeeze, I only held it for 30 minutes, not an hour. So is that, and then I proceeded up to the same high temperature of 1480 and I held for 30 minutes. So the fact that I shortened the bubble squeeze or that I slowed the schedule or a combination of both probably created these bubbles. I'd be curious what your opinions are. So my options here are to go ahead and slump it as it is, or maybe flip it and refire it. I just don't know that I want to put this piece in again, and I don't want to risk these bubbles then becoming bigger issues. So my choice is to go ahead and slump it. So I'll show you what that looks like next. Okay, everybody, here it is. Uh, I'm generally very pleased with this piece. I used um, one of Laurie Spray's bottomless molds, so I've got a nice flat bottom on this. Um, the slump was good. There's a little bit of kind of an organic edge here. If I had a lot of cold working equipment, I might tackle that, but I'm, I'm also all right with it. My only um, disappointment would be some of the bubbles that formed um, and, you know, kind of stuck around here. So I do want to try to perfect this and get better. So you can see where like that one actually kind of dips in there. But generally speaking, I am I'm pleased with this. There are you know some really neat patterns that came out of this. Because this was already two-layer bullseye with um uh with some some clear and where it's stacked up on top of each other, there's some some nice kind of color displacement that you see uh because of some of that clear that's in there. Just a, a very, very pleased with this piece. Very happy with the color. That peacock is just amazing. This is real simple, just peacock and clear. And I got a really, really nice piece out of it. So hope you learned something. Uh, follow along in the learning journey by subscribing. And, um, uh, you know, this is a great example of using some scrap. These were, these were two pieces that had big bubbles in them. I think I've already mentioned that, that were kind of epic disasters. Frankly, I just was pissed off <laughs> when it happened. But I kept the glass, put it off to the side, decided how I would repurpose it, and then got something that I think is, is really pretty magnificent out of it. So I'm going to do more of these kind of scrap projects in the future. So subscribe if you want to see more of what I'm working on. Thank you. Okay, here's a little bit of bonus footage for you. I had another one, so uh, you saw it in the earlier video. I went ahead and filled it up. Now, I had um, chopped another failed piece up, but really into large chunks, large squares, and so I placed those squares in kind of haphazard pattern to kind of fill up the bottom of this mold. And then I did put a couple of broken pieces on top and some frit on top just to kind of fill in a couple of, of spaces. So this one is very different um, in that there's a it's a little bit of organized chaos in the large scrap squares that are in the bottom. And then um, the, uh, uh, you know, variety of a little bit of frit that's on top. So we'll see how this one turns out, too. Okay, so on my bonus little piece here, it fired nicely. It's got... Um, 
really nice um, full fuse on it right up to the edges. I'm really pleased with that. So the fill was good on it. I'm not sure how thick it is. I'm going to leave it in its spot though. And then I'm going to um, do a little bit more working to it uh, and put it back through the kiln one more time. Mostly because this, this uh, glass had an irid sheen to it and there are a couple of spots um, where that irid is a little, little exposed, like right there. I don't know if you can see it in the glare. So I'm gonna put a heavy la layer of clear powder on this and um, refire it. Like the other piece earlier in the video, I'm going to wipe this down before I do this. Uh, and I'm just gonna be really careful when I do that right there in the mold and then I'll fire this thing again. Okay, just to close the loop on this final project for you, this is um, a very nice slump that I got out of this piece. I'm very pleased with it. So as you can see, this was some peacock blue uh, irid, and then I did a clear cap on it that was bullseye's accordion glass. So you can see kind of that uh, 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 lined pattern in there and all of the irid. Uh, I chopped this up into big pieces. As I mentioned, I put them in you know, kind of in a random pattern, threw a couple of extra on top, a little bit of frit to kind of fill in. So there's some texture from that uh, frit that you can see, um, not actual texture, sorry. That's a very s smooth, um, but I mean, color variation, I should say. So anyway, pleased with this piece. It's about um, seven inches by about 10 inches and, um, you know, another great use of scrap. So hope you enjoyed this one as well. Take care, everybody. Hope your 2021 is off to a great start.